Most of the time, if you're using an indicator, dial indicator like this to measure a part um, for perpen uh, perpendicularity and parallelism, you would need a really expensive surface plate um, that are precision ground and lapped, um, perfectly flat. They are pretty expensive, um, but I'm gonna show you how to do almost the same thing using these parallel and perpendicular one, two, three blocks. They're called that because they're one inch high, two inches wide, and three inches long, one, two, three. So I have a set of these that I've made. Um, they are precision ground, and I'm gonna use them like a surface plate to measure my part here. So first for parallelism, I'm just gonna wipe off all the dirt. Um, because these are steel, they'll stick to the magnet on my indicator. And now I can just check for parallelism um, by laying this flat and bringing my indicator down on it. Uh, my stand is not very long, but I can reach all the way down. And um, you can see that at this point, it's about 24, 25. And as I move it along, it stays roughly in the same place. So I would say I am parallel, at least within a thousandth of an inch. Um, these are not, in, not measured in thousandths, it's in 0.01 millimeters, which is about four tenths of a thousand. Anyway, that side is pretty parallel. If I check this side, that side is also parallel. So that is checking for um, parallelism. Perpendicularity is a little bit more complicated to check, but it's still a similar concept. I'm going to leave my indicator on this one, two, three block. I'm actually going to use my second one sure it's clean and put it on here and stick it to the indicator. It can still slide back and forth, but it is magnetized to the front these ground surfaces on the indicator. I know that this face right here is in line with these faces on the front of my indicator. So if I move my dial um, until it's just touching this and tighten it up. And slide it back and forth. Um, that should be staying in the same place. It's at about 12. Um, I'm gonna move it forward because it's almost at the edge of its travel. There we go, so it's at about six or seven. Um, so if I take this off. Now, um, because these faces are in line with the plunger, uh, not the plunger, but the, the needle, that means if I put this on here, it should still be in line at six or seven. And it looks like it is, um, at this point, it's pretty perpendicular. I can check it. I can't um, measure it on the hole, so I have to measure at each of these points. But right here, that also looks perpendicular, um, at least within a thousandth. And I can't check right here, because now I'm only on one of my faces. I'd have to be on both. I can flip it and check these other sides. It looks a little bit high. And same right here, maybe a little bit high. But I think this is a really great method. Um, you don't have to use anything too expensive, just these one, two, three blocks and your indicator. And you can check any of your parts 
for parallelism and perpendicularity.